All right, welcome back to the Road to SSL series. We're on episode number four for today. In the last episode, we finally got our 2v2 rank. We're at Platinum 2 Division 2, but we got roasted by a gold when we got our division. So, uh, interesting. Either way, we haven't finished our 3v3 matches yet. We are queuing for both, but we keep getting 2v2. The playlist population, I believe, is like three times bigger in 2v2, so that's gonna make a lot of sense. As we get higher in rank, though, I believe we'll probably start to sprinkle in more threes. So if you are looking to improve in threes, they will be coming, I assume, uh, throughout the, se uh, the season here. But before we get into the games, we got to do the meme of the day. And we have Paleo Baguette with K Doppelganger. Uh, he says he wants me to find someone that looks like k Up, but there's like no way for me to do that. So I have a little bit of a better idea. All right, so I found a photo of a guy pointing to the right. And then I found a photo. Uh, it's pretty old, but it's a photo of k Up. And I was thinking a pretty easy way to do this would be to overlay k Up on one guy here and then repeat him and make them, make them point at each other. Um, but we'll have to see how it turns out. Uh, first things first, as always, we got to get rid of the background around Kate up. All right, now that that's done, we got to make him sort of fit <laughs> on top of this guy's head. And we can probably get rid of the actual guy's head as well, just to make it a little bit easier to blend it in. I'm going to get rid of everything except for the neck, which we will use to blend Kate up into the body. All right, we'll bring Kate up back. Let's flip him around. <laughs> this already looks very cursed. It doesn't look natural, but that's okay. Uh, I think that's pretty good. And what we can do is just kind of... Hopefully just erase. Thank you, Photoshop. Hopefully we can just erase around here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, and we com combine here. Let's see if I can do like a quick flip. <laughs> this is so dumb. I think I'll just add a little um a little me. Me. We <laughs> Uh, it's so dumb. I, I, uh, sometimes I make myself laugh. I hope I, I make you laugh, uh, at what I do, but, uh, this is not my finest work. I think, I think that's pretty good. Let me just move this over. There we go. Is this centered? It is me, me, we. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. There it is. Well, I did say we were going to find more threes and, uh, I didn't expect, expect it to be the first game. So here we go. We got Roland Dubs, Carly. Eliza and Whiteboard against Panda Cutie, Cram Bam, and myself. Carball Tube Man. Oh, I gotta be a little bit careful. I forgot we're really low rank. I, I also just got an achievement for playing the game. <laughs> I didn't see what that was. I was focused on the kickoff. Panda's trying to go up the wall and make a read, but at that point, if it's too awkward, obviously just get behind your teammates. Ball pops in mid. Oh. This guy might cut it here, so be a little bit careful. I could have rushed that and uh, boosted. Oh no, we have another AFK. It's honestly like, at this point, it's super expected. Oh, so if that's the case, I might just let these two like 2v2 it out. I saw some comments. You guys understand that like, it's it's a tough position to like, you know, you don't want to just like play differently. Oh, good try. Um, guys, oh boy, oh boy. Um, I don't want to just like play it out normally if, if there's a disadvantage. I feel like that's not really fair. These guys can probably play this out pretty decently. Okay, good cut. Let's be rolling here. That's a really good rotation from uh, from the orange team. I, I I will keep playing a little bit. I'm not gonna just completely not not play. But obviously the connection. Hopefully the guy comes back. A little tappy from the guy here. Oh, full speed. Oh, Cranbam's lost. <laughs> Where's he going? Where's my teammates going? Where are my teammates going? Oh, good try. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, that was speedy. This might go over the backboard here. So as it rolls up, Roland needs to get a touch. Otherwise, okay. That was a good, good little clear to the side. Otherwise, it's going to be dangerous. So I'm just going to chip this off the wall. See if we can get it. Oh, great save. Okay. So, so far, uh, we haven't really been able to play a proper threes game. Uh, it's going to take a while for us to get higher rank in threes, I feel like. As far as um, the difference between 2v2 and 3v3, it's going to take a while because like less people play it. And also, just I feel like the quality is is much lower. <laughs> He's saying take the shot. What the heck? Is that like a, a little nod at the opponents not hitting the ball? Okay. Good clue. Somebody, somebody's teammate here. Okay. It's all good. All good. I, this is the thing. He probably... He probably doesn't see me. He's probably very tunnel vision on the ball. This game is very hard for new players. So when they're like focused on the ball, 
I, I try not to fault players at this rank because it's like um oh boy oh I don't I, I don't really fault players at the at the start of the game for like just tunnel visioning on the ball because it's like pretty much the only thing they can probably see um I would suggest uh putting up your nameplates size a lot of people ask me like why do I do it I personally think that it's like easier to see but also um another thing is that for you guys you can see better on mobile um, if you are watching from your phone, it's a lot easier to see who's who. Uh, but it is also just good to be able to see players. Um, to be able to see them like much earlier and much easier over the ball because their nameplates are so tall. Especially in 1v1. Um, I find that in 1v1... Um, oh, am I last? Okay. Uh, in 1v1, you can actually see over over the uh, the ball with a bigger nameplate. All right, I'm gonna wait in mid here. I doubt it's gonna come out mid, but we can try. A try from Cram Bam. Yes, two players. Maybe my teammate can rotate in. Good touch. Might chase it up here. See, the majority of like Rocket League players are lower ranked. Believe it or not, a lot of players don't aren't like the try hard, sweaty, like trying to improve at all times players most of it is the casual player base um so I, I think that if you really are looking to improve and be those players that uh are are gonna be standing out in the lobbies um you can't really get frustrated with people who are like at a lower rank because they may not play the game as much as you i try I, I always take that with a grain of salt too with like even high level games uh and i'm not very good at that i honestly get pretty frustrated sometimes when, when there's players that like and it's the mass matchmaking's fault, not my fault. Uh, like when there's someone who's like 1750, uh, and I'm 2.1k, and I'm against two 1900s, but because of the, like the way the MMR works, um, it ends up balancing out. But it really isn't a fair game. But there's just not enough players at the high rank to at least warrant, you know, the matchmaking not to give me that game, which is kind of annoying. But it is what it is. Yeah. 2v3s and 3v2s and 1v2s and whatever is never fun uh, for anybody. Honestly, like, I don't really like them. Even though it's like, oh, it's free MMR, it's free points. I don't really care. I just want to play good Rocket League at the end of the day. Like, whenever something goes wrong in 2v2 at the high level, um, I like to give... Oh, Pitch Veteran. I, I like to just wait for the players to come back. Unless they've done it to me in the past where I've been AFK or something's been wrong and I say, please wait, and they don't, then I never will. I never I never give them the uh, the time. But that was a full bronze lobby. Uh, so that makes a little sense. People are moving around the field quite a bit, but they're not um, getting like really heavy touches or really good contact on the ball. They're definitely chipping the ball here and there, but the like, positioning's kind of all over the place. What's cool about this series is we're jumping between 2v2 and 3v3 and the ranks will be very different throughout. So it'll be like a nice sprinkle in of different ranks because now we're gonna have higher level players. Uh, just by having a different rank. So we're going to hit this to the side. It should be uh, this guy to pop the ball forward. What I can do is I can bump this guy off the ball. So hopefully my teammate can go over this a little high. Great try. Almost an own goal. A little scary. But sometimes it's good to just pay attention to the, the player that's going to hit the ball before you can do anything about it. Rather, rather than uh, the ball. If the ball's over your head... I said a position. I don't know why I flips. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I'm trying to like not play fast. Oh, hey, this is my teammate here. Um, but yeah, sometimes when you like being off the ball, I've talked about this in the, a couple episodes before. Uh, off ball play is really important. Like knowing where to be. That's a really good demo. Oh my goodness. Okay, well I gotta roll that one in. That's a really good pass. That was a really good bump. <laughs> it was like a heat-seeking missile in the net there. That was great. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, more than half the game is off-ball play, in my opinion. Uh, you're not always going on the ball. Like, if you are one player out of the four players in the field, realistically, in, in, a, in a perfect world, you are 25% on the ball and 75% off the ball, right? And same with 3v3. You're going to be even less. So you're going to be like 16% on the ball. Meanwhile, 84% of your gameplay is off ball. Or should be. But I know that a lot of players like to chase the ball. So they try to be more than that. But I 
realistically, I mean, obviously you want to be better and you want to have more possession than the opponents. So it's not like a perfect analogy, but you get what I'm saying. Is that like a lot, a lot more of it will probably be you off the ball. So knowing where to position and where to place yourself in a spot to be helpful for your teammates is ooh, wrong flip. That's actually something I was going to talk about too, is a lot of new players, they get confused with the fact that like they are look their car is backwards, right? And they're looking at the ball. So he hits, he, he ended up hitting left on the stick, but because his car is facing backwards, uh, to what his perspective is, um, he ends up flipping the, the wrong way. So getting used to like, you know, I'm facing the ball right now. And if I click right right now, I'm going to go to the left on my screen. It's really important to like get used to that. It takes a lot of uh, like, you know, I kind of like to imagine on the screen. I can't really like describe this, but like on my car, I'm like seeing like an arrow on the front of my car. Oh, that's a great shot from them. Uh, I'm seeing like an arrow in front of my car that's always like moving. And I always think about like, I'm actually facing that arrow. I know it's like kind of, that's kind of counterintuitive, but that's kind of the way I visualized it when I started the game. I don't really do that anymore. It's all like second nature now, but um, that's something to think about if you're if you're still like a little bit uncomfortable, even with like you know aerials in the air, going backwards and navigating. Uh, I would go into training. Uh, let me get a clear here first. Uh, as I say, I like to go into training and then just do this away from the ball, like fly away from the ball and try and get used to it, so I can land on the wall and whatever, and just get used to the aerials, because um, it can be uh, really disorienting. I wait mid here. It's a good pass, but once again, that, that pass is okay. I wouldn't call it actually a good pass because it's a little scary because it's like really close to the to the net. That's a great chip from my teammate. Should I finish this? Oh, that's tough. I don't know if this guy is actually legitimate. Like he's actually playing pretty well. He's got nice chips and stuff. I mean, this might be a legitimate platinum. I don't know. I don't really know what the ranks are like yet. We just got the rank from last game or last series episode. So I... We'll have to see how the, the ranks have changed since the last Rodesta cell. The last one was about a year ago. And people have gotten a lot better. Good. I could have definitely went faster than that. It was just a good center, so I was just seeing what would happen. Ooh, good try. Okay, so he hit it away. Right here I see that um, he hit the ball away so I can go for the challenge. Okay, I'm going to stay with the ball here in the corner. It's a good challenge, but once again, I can let that go past me, and then my teammate should be rotating. That's the kind of rotation you want to see. Is ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, you want to like kind of be the player there to bait the touch off the wall, and then uh, your teammate can come in and 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 as long as they're in the right position, they should be there to make some sort of clear or play the ball. Um, but the wrong play would be for me to do that and then turn in on the ball again. So I'm gonna go for this and then like miss. <laughs> but you def definitely should be like able to go on that ball okay oh oh hello hello no problem i'll just bait the flick out good clear yes the platinums are like getting pretty good at like getting contact on the ball and like being in, like you know able to get a, a pretty solid touch and like reading the ball Aerials are a little shoddy, but they're definitely like, he's ever definitely going for them and he's definitely getting a good idea at like, you know, what he can do with the ball. Okay, both of them challenge in the corner. This is a dangerous spot for me to be in the corner. Uh, my teammate is trying to go for it though. This guy is already on it, so I'm just gonna wait. And now I can go for this. And like, I'm totally okay if he just barrels at that. Oh. Now I would, you could just hit this, but the, you can see how much space I have here. What I'm gonna do is hit this uh, uh, towards the net. And see what happens. Oh. Nice finish. Um, a lot of players, they'll see the ball in, like with free space there. And they'll just panic. That wasn't the best play for me. I'm just trying to show you an example of like how you can gauge how much space you have. There was somebody that challenged the ball. So, you know, they flew into our net when they went past the ball. And I knew the other player was in the back corner. So, all of this space on this right side of the field was all my real estate. Same thing here. This guy just got bumped. So now I know there's space on this ball. And I can wait until someone gets close to stay close here. That should be my teammate to go back. We're up 5 1 here. So this should be pretty good. Oh. That was an interesting play. Oh. Oh. All right. 
Not a bad game. Uh, Lightbringer played pretty well. Um, and uh, had some good bumps at the start there. Overall, good rotations. It's definitely looking a little bit cleaner in 2v2. Uh, then 3v3, I mean, that's because we're in bronze in 3v3 right now somehow, but either way, on to the next one. All right, so we got 2v2 again. We got Pablo and Rengus versus Stanny and myself. Let's see how it goes. So we're getting well into, like, higher uh, platinum. Let's see my teammate going, so it backed off. Oh, we got wall shots now. Okay, I like that. Good clear. Definitely pretty high, like, higher level game. A good bump from the opponent i'm gonna try and back out here what i'm gonna try and do is get in the way for my teammate he did push up but it was smart of him to back off and i have space for a free clear now what the better play would have been just to shoot that because it was quite open but you can always just clear it to space as well i see pablo backing off in the net so what i'm gonna do is pop off the backboard and maybe see if they panic good clear from them take the boost now stanny is playing in the net but this guy does not have the double so he can reliably kind of go out towards this ball oh my teammate is not moving I'll try and stall for him, see if he comes back. He's back. I think he was, like, busy for a second, so he went back to net. Oh. Nice aerial. Wasn't really necessary. There was space to just hold on to that ball. Um, In that situation. The Pablo's kind of, like, scared. I'm just going to go for a shot. Good save. There was a lot more space to go for, like, a top corner there. He let go of the ball here. So now I can go for the ball. You can see how that was a little scary. Oh, hello. Um, it was a little scary for me to go for the ball the way that I did, but this should be open for him. Nice. Great play. And this is why you don't barrel into the challenges like this. Like that guy was last man, and he just went in for like a uh, you know an all or nothing play, which isn't a good idea. Um, it also was an overcommit from the opponent on, in our net, the one that was in the net, um, who went for like the sidewall boom. Both weren't great touches. Good 50. This should be Pablo to turn this. I like that he's controlling it. This is good. See, I'm just going to wait, though. Over his head. I let go of the possession. You can see if you flip the ball forward like that, you're going to give away the ball. That's a great shot for my my teammate once again. So, Rangus had space. He popped off the wall, but he didn't quite follow it fast enough. And also, Pablo turned away. So, he was in net, but then he decided to go for the boost. But there was, an, uh, there was a shot looming, so you really shouldn't be turning away from the net like that. When you see an open ball in midfield and there's an opponent, try to get a good read on what they're going to be doing um, and whether or not they're going to take a shot or control it. Try to stay with this. That's a great shot. And I'll let that go. That was a good play from them like, to push that down the field. Um, I don't want to just like let goals in. I also just don't like when I want to reward like positions where like they get good control and like they make a good play. Um, this might be Pablo here to get it back to us. Was well, a great shot. Is that in? Oh. Let's see if he stays with us on the wall. He's definitely trying to stay close. Looks like he might turn back on this. Stanny's a little backward, a little awkward in net, but both people do go. So this corner is actually okay to challenge oh Stanny's in the same spot this must be like a slippery spot on the field or something this causes the uh the car to break down get in there get in there go ahead Stanny. i believe in you oh okay it's a decent arrow to keep it close you can see they're kind of trying to posture in mid here might be a good shot for them yeah um, they're trying to posture in mid there to wait for us to give them the ball. That's really smart from them. Um, like right here, that's it ended up popping off the back of Stanny, but um, that whole situation was really good from them. Just like waiting to see what was going to happen and how the play was going to develop. And uh, that's how you find those openings, those weaknesses on players who give the ball away. Um, once again, this guy keeps AFK. I don't know what's going on, man. This this series has been just AFK season. There should be Pablo here to clear this. Might be awkward for him. Ooh. Okay. So this should be pretty open. I'm going to take a shot and see if he saves it. Good. Now, if you're uncomfortable going for that ball there, you can just back off. Um, definitely is is definitely available on the back, uh, the side wall there to go up the wall and like clear it out. But that's a little more advanced. That's why I didn't go for it. But just because you're uncomfortable doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Um, 
I know people are going to complain like, oh, you know, my teammates go, go for things that are they're way, you know, they're not good enough to go for and all that stuff. I get that. I can totally get that. Like training is definitely a place to really experiment. Um, but at the same time, you got to you got to push your limits. Limit break, as someone some might say. So I have space here. This guy's going to go for the ball again. I'm just going to back off. And now this ball is a little dangerous. I might shoot this. Close to the wall, so we should be decently okay. Yeah, I was gonna say like, in that situation, um, like it's too close to the wall for them to really get a good angle. I mean, a higher level player definitely would score that. So someone needs to go for that ball. But right now, I think we're okay. Like with the ball being that tight against the wall, like you can let them hit the ball into the wall and then just follow it up, the way that I just did there. Um, sometimes better not to panic and get a good idea of like what's possible with the cars. Not a bad episode, really. I mean, that was honestly much higher level player that play than I expected in in Plat. Um, but it's not nothing like crazy yet. Um, definitely better control than last season, I believe, but not by much. I think it was definitely good. Also, someone lost connection at the end there, anyway, so it's all good. We had a few seconds left, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I mean, that 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 was definitely a more digestible game for me to be able to talk about. Three v three was a little bit messy, considering it was all bronze players, but they definitely like I def definitely could see them all trying to understand the rotations and stuff. Um, but hopefully, three v three gets a little bit higher rank soon. I'm, I'm like six hundred MMR. I should be getting higher than two hundred. I don't know why that's happening. We are Platinum 3 now, Division 2, so it's going to keep getting better and better. Uh, I'm really curious to see how, like, the champ level is, because I know there's a lot of, like, videos lately from other creators talking about how champ is kind of like the grand champ graveyard, I guess. I don't really know how to describe it. And even uh, GC is sort of like a low SSL graveyard right now, where everybody's kind of, like, stuck in these ranks where they're probably lower ranked than they ever used to be. Their peak rank was lower or higher. Meanwhile, this season has been just the roughest for, for ranking up, so... Don't let it demotivate you. It's just kind of the state of the game right now. Um, but hopefully this series will uh, get you guys up a rank or so. I've seen a few comments uh, talking about how uh, every season I do this, they, they go up like a full set of ranks, like Diamond 3 to Champ 3 and then Champ 3 to GC3. So they're hoping that they get to SSL with this next one, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's been, been pretty cool so far. Um, hopefully uh, the 3v3 will get a little nicer. But either way, it's a nice time. Have a good day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.